This is a specialized crux, and over here, the brand new Canyon Grail CFR. Two top of the line gravel bikes, but which one is best? In this video, we are going to find out. I'll compare design features, tire clearance, weight, price, and of course, how they ride. Because I'm David, and you're watching Just Ride Bikes. Let's dive in, and we'll start with the Canyon Grail. So the Canyon Grail is the company's latest state-of-the-art aero gravel race bike and has some really cool features. Firstly, full integration with a one-piece handlebar and stem. It's aero optimized as well. We have space for up to a 42 mil wide tire and it comes spec with a 40 mil wide tire. And if you're wondering, yes, you can fit a 45 tire, but tire clearance at the back is very, very tight. And I personally wouldn't recommend it, but you can if you want to but designed, optimized around a 42. This is the top of the range CFR model. It's also a cheaper CF SLX and CF SL, which doesn't get all the same features we have here. And the full carbon frame weighs a claimed 855 grams. And this entire bike, SRAM red access, size medium is 7.7 .7 kilos on my scales when you strip everything of it. So a pretty lightweight and a pretty fast bike. And then the Specialized Crux. Well, my Specialized Crux launched in 2021 with a crazy lightweight frame. They claimed 725 grams and takes lessons learned from the Athos frame, which is even lighter, sub 600 grams. And with a top end group set like you have on the Canyon over there, you're looking at a 7.25 kilogram complete bike weight. But here we're mid-range SRAM 4s and these 303 Firecrest wheels is more like 7.6 so pretty darn light and just a bit lighter than the canyon over there we have space of wide tires up to 47 these are 45s and a lot of space between the rubber and the carbon now you might be wondering why i don't compare the diverge from specialized their gravel race bike against the canyon grail and because while as much as i love the diverge both the str and the regular version i think the future shock is great if you want extra comfort I prefer the low weight and the simplicity of the crux and the option to add a suspension stem if you want it for extra comfort over and above what you get from the wide tires. And because those of you in the review of that canyon asked for a comparison with the crux, so here it is. Let's talk about design and the canyon is easily the most modern of the two bikes here. We have all these aero tube profiles, the aero seat posts, also designed to be compliant as well. Not as compliant as a VCLS split seat post, but more than the one on the Ultimate, which the shape is based on. We have this novel gear groove for fitting accessories like extensions, computer or lights if you want. Extra mounts on the top tube for a bag. We have that down tube storage, of course. You can fit a bag here as well, as I show you in my review of this bike. And of course, you can fit mud guards. The company's own mud guards go on the bike really well too. And you have it with one by or two by as well. Now, the Crux does look a bit dated, a bit old fashioned perhaps, compared to the modern sleek lines of the Canyon over there. But I do like the simple round tubes, the non-dropped rear stays. It's very classic and I like that look about the bike. We don't have integration or internal cable routing up front, but you can swap the stem, handlebar if you need, and servicing the headset bearings is much easier as well. Simple round seat post, but one not designed for compliance, designed for weight first and foremost, but we do have a nice simple external seat clamp as well. But the frame is devoid of any extra mounts for bags on a top tube, none on a down tube, no integrated storage, no hatch on a down tube like on a diverge gravel bike platform. And sadly, there are no mudguard mounts because the bike was originally born many, many years ago as a cyclocross bike. That's what a crux is known as. But with this version, they moved it a little bit into a gravel space. And indeed, if you go on their website, it's in the gravel category with longer wheelbase, slacker angles, and the bigger tire clearance. The same as you get on a Diverge as well. 47 mil wide tires will fit this bike. And it's a bike that does cross really well. I've been racing it for the last few weeks because I'm narrow 33 mil tires and it does that really well. And most of the year I'll be riding as a gravel bike with 45 mil wide tires, occasionally a redshift stem and occasionally even a suspension fork as well. So quite a versatile bike. So it ticks a lot of boxes, but it doesn't tick the boxes if you want mud guards, uh, extra storage and so on. So 
perhaps old fashioned, definitely very modern and contemporary. But which you think is the best looking bike here? Let me know by leaving a comment down below. The geometry differences are surprisingly small between the two bikes. The Crux used to be an out and out CX race bike. This new version has an interesting blend of CX gravel and road. And the new Grail is longer and slacker than the original model. The Grail has a longer wheelbase, reach and a half degree slacker head angle than the Crux. The bottom bracket drop is almost the same and the chain stays are identical. The biggest difference is the stack. The Crux is much lower at the front than the Grail and this is something you notice straight away. Another key difference is in the handlebars and stem that comes on each bike as stock. Specialized gives you a 42 centimeter wide handlebar and a 100 mil stem. I have a 90 on my bike, while Canyon goes with a wider 44 centimeter handlebar and a short 70 millimeter stem. Right, that's enough geeking out on all the differences between these two bikes. I'm gonna get changed and you join me on the other side and we'll find out how these two bikes actually ride and what the differences are like on a trail and a road. Okay, let's start with the Crux. And this is a bike I've been riding since about April, built up from a frame set with a group set and different wheels. And I'll be using different tires and components, suspension stems, suspension forks, and different seat posts on it in that time. And it's just a lovely, lovely bike to ride. It floats down the trail, down the road so nicely and has an amazing ride quality, very, very refined. And the geometry works on the road and off road works when you're going cross racing it works when you're gravel riding in california or in the cotswolds it's a good all-round bike the geometry changes with this model definitely give it a wider appeal than the old version which was a great cyclocross race bike but it's a great gravel bike definitely a faster handling quick steering very nimble agile setup and when I put the wheels and tyres from the Canyon into the Crux just to see how the bike handled and to give a fair comparison of comfort and smoothness, the Crux is definitely a firmer ride. It doesn't float over the rough stuff quite as well as the Grail does. The seat post on the Crux is definitely one that leans towards weight and stiffness and the handlebar stem setup don't give as much comfort as the Grail setup. But when I swapped uh, 45 mil wide tyres on the Crux because there's ample clearance, the ride quality just shoots up, the smoothness ramps up loads compared to the Grail. And the other benefit with the Crux, we have a normal round seat post. So I put a suspension seat post in there or a Canyon split seat post and get loads of comfort. So the opportunity to get a smooth ride on the Crux than the Grail is definitely there. Out of the box with the same 40 mm wide tyres, the Canyon is smoother, but with bigger tyres and a change of seat post, the Crux is definitely a smooth ride for gravel racing, gravel exploring, and even bike packing. And here's the thing, even though the weight of the two builds is largely the same, the Crux for some reason feels lighter and it seems to climb better for some reason. Maybe it's extra frame stiffness, just feels more energetic on the climbs, got the same gearing, although a smaller chain ring, but even in the same gears, the Crux seems to handle the climbs a bit better than the Grail does. And of course, the ability to change the longer, shorter stem, the different shape handlebar, flare drops, or narrow for more aero, is entirely doable on the Crux, so a real big benefit. It's early October, but already we're dealing with mud. Look at the state of that, filthy. No tire is wide enough for that. Mud bath, what a state. And now let's see how the Grail compares on the same trails on the same day. And the first big impression is the handlebar. I love the shape and the feel of the handlebar on the Grail. So the handlebar, as a first point of contact, is just lovely. And it feels fast, and it feels racy, and it feels good, really nice. And the Grail feels racier, partly down to the tyres, but when I put those tyres on the Crux, it gives a similar sensation of speed, both on the road and on dry gravel. And with the same tyres and wheels fitted to both bikes, the Grail does have the edge when it comes to ride comfort and smoothness. That seat post does a really good job 
of bending. You actually see it bending between your legs and does give quite a lot of comfort over the one on the Crocs, which is definitely not a bendy seat post at all, which is why I've been trying suspension seat posts and the VCLS split seat post on the Crocs over the last few months, a bit more comfort. So the Grail does feel racier and faster, although with me on it, Strava is showing the time differences are almost nothing. I can't really perceive much difference other than that sort of psychological uh, difference between the two bikes. The Grail is a bit overgeared for me. That 42 tooth chainring, too big. I got a 40 on my Crux with the same cassette. And you can't change it on the Grail, you're, you're stuck with it unless you spend money on a new one after you buy the bike. And that's the downside to buying a Canyon. You can't customize any part of the bike at all. Whereas you can with a specialized for your local bike shop or do as I did and buy a frame set and build it yourself. Both bikes handle really well on the road, on gravel, in the forest tracks like I am today. And while the differences on paper between the geometry of both bikes is very, very small, the Grail definitely has a bit more stability for that longer wheelbase and just feels a bit more planted and a bit calmer. The Crux definitely has more agility, faster steering, turns much more quickly and is better on single track and, and definitely a lively bike and perhaps sometimes a bit too much. You have to be kind of switched on to ride a Crux. I have got quite a short stem on, so a longer stem would slow it down a bit. I like the handling of a short stem on the bike, the same as on the Grail. So for that long distance, high speed gravel racing that the Grail is designed for, I think the geometry does work better. But in isolation, both bikes ride extremely well. I really am splitting hairs between the two bikes to try and help you choose the right one for you. I just have been wondering whether Specialized need something between the Crux and the Diverge to go after that aero gravel race category that Canyon are clearly aiming the new Grail at. The Crux is lightweight and has big tire clearance, but it's not aero optimized in any way, shape or form. And Diverge has extra comfort and down tube storage and great geometry and a future shock, but doesn't have the aero or the low weight of the Canyon Grail. The other difference we should talk about between the two bikes is of course price and value for money. The Canyon I've been testing is well specced for the money with a SRAM red group set, power meter and lightweight DT Swiss carbon wheels. It's a very nice package indeed. The Grail range does start at a rather more accessible two and a half thousand pounds, although sadly the CFL doesn't get the down tube storage. The Crux is altogether a pricier option. You're talking over £11,000 for a SRAM red build, so nearly £4,000 extra over the Canyon. Ouch! And the cheapest model is £3,500 with old mechanical 11 speed SRAM rival. You can, however, buy a Crux frame set and build it yourself as I did. It's worth adding that while the Specialized is more money, you buy it from your local bike shop and all the service that entails. Whereas the Canyon arrives in a box and dealing with issues or returns, it's a little more problematic. Okay, after all that then, which of these two bikes is best? The Specialized Crux is getting on a bit and possibly showing its age. There's no aero, no integration, or mounts and mud guards and extra bags and bottles, but it's light as heck and has space for big tires and is a really versatile bike. Gravel, cyclocross and road, it does it all really well. And I love the way it looks of course too. And then compared to that, the Canyon Grail is fast as heck. We have aero, we have integration. I love the fact we have mud guard mounts, down tube storage and an optional bag as well. So a really interesting option. But the big limitation is tire clearance. You can fit a 45, but it's really, really tight and I personally wouldn't recommend it. So stick with a 40 or 42. And a Canyon is better value for money as well. You get more bike for your money than you do from Specialized. But taking everything into consideration and weighing out all the pros and cons, all the different features, for me, it's a Specialized Crux. I love the weight the simplicity, the easy maintenance, and the big tire clearance, and of course, the amazing way it rides. So that is my winning bike from this shootout. 
but let me know which bike you would choose if you had the opportunity to go for the Canyon or a special bike, but leave a comment down below. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, hit that subscribe button down there. And if you want to see a full review of the Canyon, watch this video right there. But I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you so much for watching.